this is, I believe, one of the interviews that made people mad. And the problem with this is people getting mad is that this is what we believe. And it's just once people hear it publicly, they don't like the whole religion. They're like, they like the love. They like praying for healing. But when you get that Christianity 101, what we believe in, what we don't believe in, what we're a part of, what we're not a part of, when when we preach the gospel, it's it's inflammatory to some people. So I'm going to play this part. You're going to hear Bishop Mari Mari and kind of hear how he talks. And we can go from there. Want to be sent to a church? Please send me where there is a big congregation. I don't want to go to a little village with only a couple of families there. I won't be seen. But I want to be in a church where there is hundreds and millions of people that come to that church. I, with this, I feel I'm powerful. I am in charge. But that is not Christianity. That is not Christ himself. But let me say this, dear Patrick. The Christ I came to know through his grace. I'll die for him any second. I do not give one penny with all love and respect, no matter what happens, because the Christ that came and revealed himself to this piece of wreck is the only one. He is my King, my Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer forever. And I will stand and speak the truth. Let the whole world hate me. I do not care. With love and humility, I say this. I do not care. You know why? Because I didn't come for people to love me. I came for Christ to be pleased with me and says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Come and inherit the kingdom of, of your father, which was prepared for you before the, the creation of the world. Now, the issue is, when I come to Christ and by his... You hear how he's obviously very well spoken. I mean, he speaks for a living every week all the time in front of people. He's giving you his stance. He's not concerned about how many people he stands in front of or how many people he doesn't. He's concerned about the gospel. He's concerned about Jesus Christ. He's concerned about finishing the race. He's concerned about Jesus saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. His grace. I give my life to him when he engulfs, when he takes over, when he rules and reigns over my life. I fear nothing. You know why? Because the moment I don't have anything worldly, materialistically, I don't fear to lose anything. When I That's a good point right there is, you know, a lot of times when Jesus said, die to yourself, a lot of times that was scary for me. Like, what do you mean? Like, as a Christian, sometimes you want to hold on to certain things. And and what where Bishop Mari Mari Emanuel is saying he's at is he's at a point where you can't take anything from him. You can kill him and he'll be with Jesus. He doesn't care. You he you can take away his money, you can take away material. He's not concerned with it at all. I have nothing. I have fear of nothing mm. because when I have Christ, I have everything. But the issue with Christ. Mm. And there's, there's the lesson right there. Those that lose their life will gain their life. In Jesus Christ, those that lose their life for his sake will gain their life. Now they have everything in him and everything that they have is from the Lord and is a blessing. That, that's a good, strong lesson right there. I mean, I'm telling you, Bishop Mari Mari Emanuel cooks. Christ, it is not materialistic. It's spiritual. Yeah. It is love. Now, love is the supreme ethic. I ask an atheist, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Hindu, any human being, do you want to be loved? Everybody will say yes. You know, even when you look at the at the serial uh, killers, even when you look at the at the big dr uh, drug addicts and and drug dealers, if you trace their life all the way back back to childhood, I can assure you a huge percentage they were lacking love at their childhood. That's why they ended up who they ended up. It is the love that forms and shapes and molds a human being. It is that love that never fails. It is that love that never dies. Christ is calling us to love him. He is not calling us to follow a set of rules, guidelines, and regulations. And let me say this to all. Yeah, and you, you will see that 
by loving Christ, loving God, you will not want to sin anymore. But when you look at it, it's, you know, sometimes you ever hear they say it's all about perception. When you look at it, what's the best way to say this? When you look at it like, I just have to follow a, a, a law book, you feel oppressed. Believe me, I've, I've been in that situation. I think m- the majority of Christians go through like these different stages where they mean well. And when you catch a Christian in a certain stage, you will get that legalistic, oppressive Christian. And it's, it's horrible. If, I mean, if you really are preaching what you're talking about, it's a horrible way to live. And, and you can take the same guy who sins just as much, meaning like they're both trying to cut back and sin for sin. Somebody who loves God with all his mind and all his heart and focuses on him and doesn't want to do it because of that, because he's choosing that God is his Lord, Savior, shepherd, teacher, like we spoke on earlier. And he, he is able to not be oppressed when he's not sinning. He doesn't feel stuck in, in some legalistic law. Jesus didn't come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law. A lot of people, one of the verses that gets misconstrued, and you know, did, does that mean that he is the living word? He So he is the law of Moses. He's the word, living word of God. So he is the living word, and he came to fulfill the law. And he gave his commandments and his commandments. If you follow those, you won't feel legalistic and it, and you will, if you are truly following and, and, and living out those laws to love God with all your heart, there's going to be no room for sin. Are we going to fall and fail? Absolutely. But the righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up, but the wicked stumble in calamity. I believe that's how the verse goes. I might have gotten a little wrong. All the religions of the world. You're talking about you must fast and you must do this and you must you do your penances and whatever you have to do. Let me say this. To enter in the presence of God, who can do what God wants? Who can fulfill the fullness of the law of God? We are nowhere near that perfection to do and abide by what God does. He showed that in the Old Testament, the Israelite nations. Mm -hmm. They failed him from the word go till the very end. That's why Jesus came. And that's what Bishop Mari Mari is talking about. Who can fulfill the law? And doing so so well can now stand before God. Nobody. But he is the never failing God, his mercy that carries us, all of us as humans, regardless whether we are Christians or not. So when those religions out there with all love and respect, they talk about laws, I'll ask them, are you fulfilling that law? Of course not. You're falling very short of that law. So don't tell me you have to do this where you are failing as a leader. Your prophet failed those laws. Your own prophet failed them. Who? Muhammad. And all the other leaders. Such a reporter move. And the- So he wanted to know the name. And he, you know, a lot of times when a question like this is answered and they know it's going to be controversial, they won't, they won't answer it. Or they'll kind of try to beat around the bush or they'll say, I'm not here for that. You've seen a lot of that lately uh, when they're interviewing people um, outside of religion. The reason this i believe is the clip that has upset people about bishop mari mari emmanuel speaking on muhammad the prophet now in the past it is widely known that anything that is said about muhammad the prophet has ended with extreme violence people have died and been murdered Um, so this is a commonality and here I feel the bishop is not disrespecting Muslims or Islam, but I believe that some people believe he is. Because as a Christian, you're going to have to disagree with each other at your core beliefs. And how do you do so respectfully 
without disrespecting somebody. Someone's going to feel disrespected at the end of the day. Because if you're allowed to preach the gospel, you're going to say things when asked that are going to upset people because you don't believe what they believe. And the very reason why Muhammad failed because he's dead. Their book says that. But their book also says about my Messiah, even though the Isa in the Quran is not the Christ of the Holy Bible, totally separate people. We cannot claim something that is not truthful. I know truth hurts. I'm not offending people. I'm speaking the truth. And if it offends you, I'm really sorry not. I'm not sorry for that. But let me tell you one thing. Your book says that Isa, son of Mary, went up to heaven alive, and he will come back to judge the dead and the living. If I ask a Muslim who judges, they will say God. Well, you're telling me this prophet will judge. So which is which? Has the prophet taken the role of God? Has God gone on vacation and he's come and take his position? No, but Isa is the living Messiah, even their book says. I speak Arabic, I read Arabic, I'm fluent in Arabic. So you can see he's going deep, all the information that he's gathered. He's, he's very well versed in the matter. This, like I said, this is the clip where they, that a lot of people are saying online is what has offended a lot of, I wouldn't say a lot, but I would say it has offended Muslims. And, and some of these Muslims are making responses back, I believe. I haven't checked into this. I just can kind of see the surface level that it looks like this was a controversial viral clip. When the kid was being held down, they said, why did you do this? Why did you do this? He said, he, if he would have never disrespected my prophet, I would have never came. And so the kid was radicalized and went from not liking what Bishop Mari Mari Emanuel said to becoming a terrorist and committing a terrorist attack based upon uh, against a, a Christian movement, a Christian church, a Christian bishop, or well, Orthodox, but you know what I'm talking about. When they say I'm we're all Christians, we believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Don't come here with me splitting hairs on theology. I'm, I'm not I'm not here for that. That's this is definitely not going to be that channel. But Isa, son of Mary, Jesus, son of Mary, is the word of God and the spirit of God. Now, let me ask you, my dear Muslim, if you're claiming Isa is a prophet, then how come all the other prophets which you believe in, you believe in Moses, you believe in Isaac, you believe in all the prophets of the Old Testament. How come none of the Old Testament prophets were referred to as the word of God, except Isa? Why? How come all the prophets and every single... He's cooking the word of God. This right here. Sorry, I'm, I'm using my phone as a, a bookmark for later, but the word of God. The beginning was the word. The word was God, and through him all things occurred. That's a rap song, Christian rap song. Anyways, uh, let's 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 listen to Mari Mari finish cooking. Human being on the face of this planet was born of an earthly father and an earthly mother. Yet Jesus, son of Mary, was born in a virginal birth. Through a right. virginal birth, he has an earthly mother, but has no earthly father for his father who art in heaven. Mm. Why? This raises question come. marks. How come this man is different? His birth is different. His life is different. Even his end is different. He went up alive. Alive. And he will come back to... No one else did that. And that's, that's common in Christian circles. We believe that. Everybody knows we believe that. So for him to attack us based upon it's not it, that means that everybody who thinks that is disrespecting an, another religion if someone's going to take it that way because everybody believes that and on everybody else's side they believe what they believe so this is normal common accepted rhetoric amongst the christian community um, he did go kind of deep on their faith which which we don't a lot of Christians don't know about. Uh, there's some things he mentioned right there that I, I would have to be like, okay, let me fact check X, X, Y, and Z. So let's listen on. Judge, because he is different. That's the whole story. He is different, my dear friend. You need to come and seek 
the true God with an open mind, open heart. Don't Amen. be fanatic about your faith. And I say this even to the Christians. The moment we become fanatics about our Christian faith, we've lost Christ. We've lost the true reflection of Christ. And you may say, well, I'm a bishop. I'm different maybe to some <laughs> Christians that live in this blessed country of America who are from a Protestant branch. I come dressed up like a Ninja Turtle. I say my, I call myself <laughs> a walking tent. But hey, how, come, how come a Protestant? How come other Christians? How come a Muslim? How come a Buddhist? How come an atheist is listening to this good-looking bishop? Why? Because the day you and I, dear Patrick, and all of us. He's going to tell you why. I got to pause it for I don't want to get dinged. But... He's right. He realizes he's viral and he's spreading the word of God. He, and he's he's good at it and he's very well versed. He has a, a wealth of knowledge and it's a joy to listen to him preach the word of God. It gets me excited because my heart believes the same things about Jesus that he does. Uh, my 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 soul i can i can feel that in my soul and that's what i profess jesus christ as my lord and savior the day we give our life to christ surrender to him and say lord it is no longer i but you i know i'm weak i'll fall short i'll drift away but please lord even when i miss out even when i walk away from you i'm asking you now before it happens when it happens lord remember this moment when i called and i cried out to you lord have mercy on me, I the sinner, son of David, have mercy on me. When I pray, when I... Be Man, how many of you guys have said that prayer more than once? God, this is, this is who I am. This is where I want to be. He's doing a roll call. He's calling, he's calling you back home. Jesus is calling you back home. Do the bishop, Mari, Mari, Emmanuel. He's, he's letting you know. And bishop is bringing up a point that happens a lot with someone who backslides and they make that prayer and they say, God, I don't, or they find Jesus for the f first time. God, just remember this moment. I don't want to do those things anymore. I don't want to sin anymore. I don't want to live that lifestyle. I don't want to be out of your will. 10 toes down for the gospel. Like I said, calling us conservative Christians. I think not. This is just 10 toes down gospel walking out Christianity, full-fledged. It's beautiful. Beg him when I cry out to him, even if I fall short, he never fails because he is the living God who was revealed in the flesh. He is the Logos, the Alpha and the Omega, mm. the beginning Logos. and the end. He is the way, the truth, living and the life, word. and there is no one else. When Jesus Christ engulfs you and you surrender to him and he takes over, you have no fear because Jesus fears no one. If they say Jesus... Jesus fears no one. Remember that. When you give your life to Christ, God takes over. Fear is not of the Lord. That's in the Bible. Fear is not of God. So all these fears that we have all the time, you know, right now we're thinking about some changes and there's a lot of fear. And that's not from the Lord. So if it's not from the Lord, who is it from? So who's fear from? I mean, look, there's fear to that's going to protect you from stupidity. I, I get that. But what he's talking about is this, just this fear just people living in constant fear, fear, uncertainty, doubt, just constantly being in fear, not believing that God is. And, and that's our that's a lack of faith. That's a lack of understanding that that we have. That's something definitely a lot of people struggle with. And a lot of people may, you know, as a man, you may be saying like, well, I don't fear anything. It doesn't always have to be that means you're afraid of anything. You might not make certain moves because at at the heart of it, you're fearful of it. I can definitely resonate with that. I might want to make a business move. I might want to make a, um, there's a lot of different ways you can look at fear. Fear sometimes manifests itself in a lot of different ways. Last week, excuse me, who said to, uh, to Herod, go and tell that fox? Who stood, who stood in front of authorities and called them the sons of the snake? Who said that? Mm -hmm. It was Jesus of Nazareth. Is that weakness? No, that is mightiness and power in it. Yeah, Jesus didn't play. He came and turned the tables upside down. I know you guys remember that. He came and he healed. 
He wasn't afraid of, he saw, he knew what the, the Sadducees were thinking when he was healing people. He knew, he already knew it was going to happen. He knew that they were looking at him before they realized he knew he, they were looking at him. I mean, he's God. He's all knowing. He's not, he wasn't afraid of any, any of that. He was like, yeah, I'm, I'm here to do what I need to do. And I'm going to do it regardless of what you think. I'm God. I made this whole, I made this whole sandbox, you know, uh, it's not a sandbox, but just like he made this whole thing. You, we can't even create anything, anything that we create, we're using God's materials to create. It's cool. Why he was so powerful and blunt because his father was him. He gave his life. I'm talking about Jesus, the man, because the Son of God is God. But the Son of Man, the perfect Lamb of God, the perfect man, this man was fearless. Why? Because when this man gave his entire life to God, you fear nothing, you fear no one. Because when God is with you, who can be against you? Let me... When God is with you, who can be against you? So I'm going to see if he's going to finish up this thought here. And we're going to move on to the next video. I'll finish off with this. Jesus Christ, okay. I not only believe in him, dear Patrick, I know him. Look, I'm a sinner. I'm the weakest ever. Believe you me, I'm talking with my head placed under the sandals of the Lord if he allows me. Yes, he came over 2,000 years through a virginal birth from our Holy Mother Mary and at, at he, and he was crucified, not he was sent up to heaven. No, he was crucified. He died in the flesh on the cross and he was buried, but rose from the dead on the third day, ascended to heaven. And he's been sitting there at the right hand of the father over 2000 years ago. And he will come back again to judge the dead and the living because he's not just a prophet for he is God revealed in the flesh. This is the Jesus I talk about. That's why I fear no one. I fear nothing. And this is... Like I said, this is the video that they say is controversial. I feel like he was very respectful. He respectfully disagreed. And he he's preaching the gospel full-fledged. And I love the way he preaches, preaches it. You get a lot of content at once. It's a very good description of Jesus. I'm not here for people to love me. I'm here for Jesus to be pleased with this vessel that he uses for his glory and his glory only. He has showed me heaven and hell. And let me say this with love and humility. When you go to heaven, I can assure you, I can assure you, not because I'm a Christian, not because I'm a bishop, not because I believe in Jesus Christ, but I can assure you, in heaven, you, Muhammad will not greet you. Buddha will not greet you. Krishna will not greet you because they will not. It, was, it will be only one who is the way, the truth, and the life. It will be Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died for you and me. I'm inviting you to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior because there is no other way. If we don't have him, we are doomed forever. For in him, eternal life lies. When you go to heaven and you meet Jesus face to face, Patrick, you come back to earth. Who hmm. cares about a president? about Anthony Fauci, Klaus Schwab, George Soros, and the likes. Who cares? With all love and respect, because when I meet Jesus... Exactly. So you get the gist of it. He's not playing around. He's preaching the gospel the way it's supposed to be preached. It sounds just like the book that I'm reading from. It's not watered down at all. So I can definitely see how people could get offended so we're going to play one more video and he gives a message to Muslims and you can see that he's always acting in love. He's never really hating or saying things that are super disrespectful that would elicit a violent response. I love you and I will always love you. This now is what I want again. to say to my beloved Muslim world. They got upset with me in that interview with Patrick with David. That's okay, you can get upset, it's fine. Everybody's free. But let me tell you one thing, my beloved Muslim brother and sister. 
in humanity. I love you and I will always love you. I pray for you and I will always continue to pray for you whether you like me, hate me, accept me or reject me. Beside the point, you know why? Because my sweetheart, Jesus Christ of Nazareth always taught me to love everyone and to pray for everyone, period. But let me tell you, the question that was asked in that interview with Patrick with David and all our love and regards to our beloved Patrick. We love you and may the Lord always guide you in, in, in the truth. May the Lord always guide you in the truth. But let me tell you one thing. I'm not here to debate whether your faith is right or wrong. I'm not here to say this or that, but I will say one thing. To you, my beloved Muslim, and to every other religion in this world, not just you, to every other religion in the world, you bring your leader and I will ask and beg my leader to come and compare your leader to my sweetheart, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and let me say what you're going to say. It's not about you as a Muslim, it's about your leader. When you compare your leader, whether it's Muhammad, whether it's Buddha, whether it's Krishna, whether it's whoever it is, with all love and respect, I'm saying this. When you Look, he's, he's saying with all love and respect, he's being respectful and he is disagreeing. Absolutely. Absolutely disagreeing and every Christian absolutely disagrees with all other religions he's not trying to be disrespectful if you really believe that Christianity and Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and there is no way to the Father except through him you're gonna preach this type of way and if somebody lied to you and told you that there's another way that's on you if you think that always lead to God then you just made your own religion up and where's your book at? Because nowhere does it say that. This is something that we believe as Christians. Jesus lived, he walked, and he spoke these words. Nothing we're saying is paraphrasing. We're not thinking for God, elaborating for God. This is what God said. He came down. God gave his only son, came down, died for our sins. Point blank, period. You compare him to Jesus Christ, there is no comparison. Whether you accept him as a prophet, totally different, this prophet. <laughs> even in your book, even in your book, he is totally different. He is the only prophet according to your faith. My beloved Muslim, he is the only prophet that is referred to as the word of God and the spirit of God. No other prophet, no Moses, no Isaiah, no Ezekiel, none of the prophets ever was mentioned of that they are the word of God. Except Isa, except Isos. And by the way, like the Isa and the Quran is not the Jesus of the Bible. Totally different. Not, nothing to do. Nothing. There we go. Letting you know that, hey, and I've been told that before, we believe in Jesus. You guys are referred to as the people of the book. And I'm like, oh, really? It, this is how this happens a lot. This happens with Jehovah Witnesses. This happens with Mormons where they say, hey, we believe in Jesus as well. And you're like, oh, cool. And then like you get into it and you're like, wait, that's no. So you are then in a predicament where you're like, wait, Jesus was the half brother of Satan or, oh, wait, um, you're going to become a God. And uh, if your wife's good, you're going to resurrect her and you will have spirit babies for your own earth. Th these are the things that we just don't agree with, but you don't find out until later it's it's very 
manipulative in the beginning is the best way I can describe it. And the only way I can describe it, because straight up, if you are from those other religions, you know that we don't believe what you believe. And so what he's saying is, hey, you know, Jesus is written in the book in the um, Muslims do believe in Jesus. They do not believe that Jesus was the son of God, came here and died for our sins. They just believe that he was a prophet. And what Bishop Mari Mari Emanuel is saying is that we respectfully do not agree with your description of Jesus. Two totally two different people. Sorry, like that's the truth. And if the truth hurts, I'm really sorry, but I'm not. Not being disrespectful at all. Explaining why he believes what he believes. And and he has every right to. And uh, a Muslim also has every right to explain what he believes. We're not fighting for who has the right to or not to. We're not under Sharia law where if we were under Sharia law in a Muslim country, Bishop Mari Mari Emanuel would be killed for what he said, for what he said. So under Christian law, if if there was a country that was under Christian law, I don't believe modern day you would be killed for saying things that we don't agree with. But flip the coin, it's very well known that you will be killed for just being a Christian. You may not even, there are Christians in countries that when they are caught, um, they are killed. And they haven't even said, begin to say what Bishop Mari Mari Emanuel is saying right now. So why, question yourself, why is this person... If he is a prophet only, why is he the only prophet out of the entire Old Testament prophets? Why is this prophet being referred to as the Word of God and the Spirit of God? How come the others didn't get this kind of a title? Mm. How come this prophet, the only prophet out of all, the only one who was born in a virginal birth, he has only earthly mother, no earthly father. These are questions you need to seek the answer to. But compare the life of Christ to the life of every other religious figure out there with all love and respect. Christ, I can't compare him to none of them. And let You can see right here. It doesn't matter what religion it is. Christianity believes Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the only way to the Father. It, he's not picking on any one religion. This is at the core of our belief, Catholic, Protestant, um, Orthodox, Christian, non-denominational. Love. I love the Muslim, I love the Buddhist, I love the Hindus, I love all of you. But <laughs> one day we are going to face this one true divine God, whether he rewards us or judge us, it is up to him. And I'm telling you, not because I have the cross around my neck, not because I have this outfit on me, not because I've read the Holy Bible, not because I am referred to as a Christian, but because I know Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please, I know this man. I know this man. He took me to heaven. I didn't see Muhammad. I didn't see Buddha. I didn't see Krishna. It is Jesus. Why? Because he is the only true God who was revealed in the flesh over 2,000 years ago. He is the way to heaven. He is heaven. He is the rightful owner. He is God revealed in the flesh. Nothing to do with Christians, nothing to do with Muslims, nothing to do with Buddhists, atheists, you name it, nothing. It's got to do with the true divine God. For this, I'll die any minute. 
And I will always love you even if you come and chop my head off, I love you. I'm not here to fight you. I'm not here to go against you and offend you. I'm just speaking the truth. It is Jesus, no one else. You got to respect that. You got to respect the man doubled down and he did in love. He, he wasn't trying to offend anybody, he, but he was stating Jesus Christ is there's nobody else but him. There's no other way. Uh, he's 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 sorry, but he's not sorry about that fact.